Welcome to the WD 168. God gives us 168 hours every week to live, love, and serve. This is our take on this 168 from the Western Diocese. Memorial Day was commemorated last weekend and thereby signaling the unofficial start of summer. Before going on summer vacation, it's fitting to follow the Memorial Day spirit and realize that freedom that we enjoy is never really free. So many young soldiers who, as the artist reminds us, cannot get older, found the cost of freedom buried in the ground. This is a message that we as Armenians are well aware of, as any close or far look of our history will attest, and a message we are constantly being reminded of. Once again, this past year, and even now, our primate Archbishop Hovnan, in reflecting about Memorial Day holiday, expressed the notion of honor and courage in the midst of a world plagued by the pandemic. But of course, the situation in Armenia cannot go unnoticed, especially when threats continue and so many unresolved issues, such as that of the prisoners of war. We'd like to bring to your attention two very important letters that were sent by Archbishop Hovnan, pointing to the 200 plus Armenian soldiers and civilians that were captured and are being held in Azerbaijan following last year's war, the majority of whom have been subjected to inhumane treatment. In fact, a month ago, Human Rights Watch released a detailed article focusing on the abuse sustained by Armenians captured by Azerbaijani forces. The disturbing and inhumane treatment of these Armenians prompted the Human Rights Watch, European and Central Asian director, Hugh Williamson, to label the acts of the Azerbaijani government and Azerbaijani itself as war crimes. One of the letters sent by Archbishop Hovnan was addressed to Congressman Adam Schiff, wherein Serpazan remembers that just last week, the names of 19 of the POWs were released, some tortured and some killed. He also made the point that there are efforts to change the designation of the POWs to that of detainee. He warned in no uncertain terms that any identifier other than prisoner of war would make the Armenians who are being held illegally by Azerbaijan vulnerable to further forms of torture and maltreatment. The second letter went to the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, and currently the conference's president is the Most Right Reverend Jose Gomez, the Archbishop of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese here in Los Angeles. In his letter, Archbishop Hovnan drills home the point that the world has remained silent during the most atrocious activities by Azerbaijan. The world has remained silent when Azeris shelled a hospital where civilians were receiving medical treatment. Silent when the Azeris shelled the Church of the Holy Savior in Shushi. And the silence when barbaric activities, so terrible that I can't even mention them here, they took place. In remembering the sacred mission of our church, shared with the Roman Catholic Church and the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who specifically says the mission of his body is to proclaim liberty to the captives. Sarpazan asked the Conference of Catholic Bishops to assist in advocating for the release of hostages and prisoners of war. You know, I, I just want to break here and put this into perspective. You know, we say soldiers, and we may conjure up images of grand warriors. These are young kids. And as mentioned, some of these prisoners are civilians. Last week, when we marched in Glendale and Martin Luther King Jr. walk, we joined with other people of color and ethnicity in solidarity with the oppressed. If you ever feel that this is a one-way street, that it's just about others helping us, you're mistaken. That's what we're all about as a church. As Reverend King so eloquently stated, in the end, we're not going to remember the voices of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And thank God we do have friends. In a message received by our primate, 
A member of the Parliament of the Russian Federation writes, I received and carefully read a letter regarding the belonging of the Church of St. Hovhannes Magurdich in Shushi. I must admit that the information previously at my disposal regarding the history of construction and ownership of church does not correspond to reality. Your arguments are correct and the chronicles testify that the church has always belonged to the Armenian Apostolic Church. The only church of the Russian Orthodox Church in Shushi was actually located in a completely different place. In this regard, I regret the statements made earlier and would like to apologize. There you have it. How beautiful. A Russian, a member of the Russian parliament admitting that they were wrong in admitting that those churches are Armenian churches. In fact, as you know, the Azeri government is trying to change history, change the maps, and trying to, trying to pretend that the Armenians didn't exist in this area where we've lived for the last two, three millennia. On May 25th, Reverend Father Gomidas Zohrabian of the St. Gregory the Illuminator Armenian Church of Fowler brought the board members of a learning mission to meet with the Prime Min. Ruben Gargaloyan, the founder and president of the organization and his team provided a brief overview of the program, highlighted its mission, and stressed its accomplishments since the program's inception. The purpose of learning mission is to aid the veterans of war in Artsakh, especially those with disabilities, to rebuild their lives and careers. Everything I've spoken about today, this is your church in action. From primate to priest to volunteers, it's all about putting faith into action for a better world. So make a connection with your local priest, your local parish, talk to your priest. Get involved in your community. We concluded the Memorial Day holiday with a feeding of the homeless, once again, to accent the notion that we walk in the shoes of others. Because at one time we were homeless and hungry, today you cannot take a blind eye to those in need. You know, drop me a line at fv at wdacna.com if you're interested in sponsoring a meal. It's a simple thing to do. Let's end by telling you that deacons, a call to all those who serve at the Holy Altar or have ever wanted to, we're happy to announce that our Deacons Council is sponsoring a week, a Deacons Training Workshop, August 8th through the 15th at our Diocene campsite. More details are available on our website. Well, that does it for this week's 168. Check out more detailed information on our Facebook page as well as on our website. Our churches are open and serving our communities and streaming continues in many of our churches. We look forward to seeing you either in church, online, or of course next week when we look at that 168 from the Western Diocese.